Hey guys, Greg here. Welcome back to an easy home brewing session. Now, you know, when I cook, I love to cook. Um, I don't always feel like looking up a uh, recipe, you know. Um, sometimes I just feel like getting in the kitchen and just messing around with stuff. Now, I've been cooking long enough to be able to know what goes with what and what not to put into what, you know, and what doesn't work and what might work. And, and it's, a, it's a really cool thing to get in and just mess about and come up with something really cool, which is usually what happens with me these days because I've been cooking for a long time. So I, I kind of know what not to do. Now, as far as the home brewing thing goes, well, I've been brewing for a long time too, but I haven't been using hops and grains for as long as I've been brewing. But I've been doing it kind of long enough where I feel like I don't want to use a recipe. I just want to mess around and see what the heck goes on. Now, with that said, it doesn't mean I'm going to do a five-hour brew day just to find out that it didn't work so well. Okay, so what I'm going to be messing around with today is a little bit of hops and a little bit of grains. And I'm going to show you how, what process I go through when I'm messing about making up a recipe to see what I'm going to put into a brew. Now, because I want this to be simple and I don't want it to take all day, just in case it doesn't work, I'm going to start off with a Cooper's IPA. Surprise, surprise. Okay. Now... That's because what I want to make is an IPA style beer. Now, is this beer going to fit exactly in the style guidelines of an IPA? I don't care. <laughs> I don't. I just want a hoppy beer and I don't care what guideline it turns out in or if it even has a guideline. It's my guideline. And that's the fun of home brewing. Now, I could take this and I could grab myself some dry malt extract, which I have here. I think that's about 500 grams of amber dry malt extract that was sent to me a little while ago from somebody. And I can also grab myself some dextrose because, you know, you want to bump up the alcohol a little bit. And that's kind of like a sort of a kit and kilo style, you know, what I call a five and seven, because I'll probably put 500 grams of dry malt and 700 grams, or maybe 500 grams of dextrose in this case, um, depends on how I feel. I really don't know. That's just up to how it goes, okay? So, now I'm going to be using this dry malt extract, which has been opened already, so I'm going to want to boil it, okay, to make sure there's no funkiness and bugs or whatever in there. This stuff, it's sealed. I don't know. I never usually bother to boil it, but if it is open, then I do. So, I have to do a boil. i got to bring some water up to the boil. So why in the heck not get some hops and some grains in here? Right? Right. Here's my procedure. First, I'm going to talk about grains. I've got a lot of crystal malts here. Um, basically, crystal 60s. I've got some, um, some carap hills. I've got some English two-row, which I'm not going to use because I don't want to do a mash today. All right. So what I th what I'm thinking is here's some Crystal 60. Okay, it's been sitting around for about six months. First thing you're gonna do when you're when you're doing this kind of brewing, you know, when you're brewing from the seat of your pants, as I call it, is if you're gonna add grains to a, a kit like this, taste them. Okay, Crystal 60. That's got, it's quite sweet. It actually take. Whoop, there's a little bit of bitterness there. You could literally put milk on these things and have them for breakfast. I kid you not. They're, they taste like cereal, okay? Which is probably what a lot of cereals are made out of. So I wouldn't want to put too much of this in. So I'm thinking maybe half of this bag, 250 grams maybe 300 grams, because you're not supposed to overdo the crystal malts in your beers. Otherwise, it'll overpower the, the taste of the beer. And that's quite a strong tasting grain, okay? Well, now what else have I got here? Some other things people sent in over the past. Here's some carapils. 
okay? Let's see what they taste like. Um, they don't have as much, oh, well, they're a little bit of sweetness there. I like them. They're, they're, they're like a milder version of the Crystal 60L, okay? The 60, it means how much the, the, the grains have been roasted. I won't go into crystal malts and how they're, what they are and why they're called crystal malts. Um, I've already talked about that, but we'll, we'll do another video on grains and all that, explaining everything. But they are roasted and the, the higher the number, the more roasted they are. Okay, but they don't label them the same. But Carapils is a caramel malt, the same as crystal malt. Okay, they're just different names. Now, what else we got here? We'll, we'll get brewing. Just hang on a minute. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. That's what we're doing. I'm letting you see my procedure. This is what? Oh, this is Crystal 80. So this is supposedly darker than Crystal 60. So it should have a darker or a more pronounced or bitter taste. Surprisingly enough, this particular brand or batch of malts even though it's an 80 instead of a 60, it doesn't have as quite as amount of sweetness as the sweetness as this one. Yeah, can't even talk. <laughs> so, hmm, those are all right. We'll set those aside for a minute, and I got one more. Crystal 10. All these grains were sent in at some point. Okay, so thank you to you guys who sent them in. I want to use these up now. Crystal 10 is obviously a very light version of these other heavier crystals. Let's see what this tastes like. My dinner. <laughs> More like bread. Hot, not as much sweetness. Very mild. Okay, so now I need to make a decision. And there won't be any edits here. Let's just make a decision. I'm going to put in Two hundred. I'm going to put in three hundred gram, two hundred and fifty grams of crystal sixty. So half this bag, I'll, and I got a scale. I'll measure it. All right. And I'm going to put in five hundred grams, and this might shock some people if if you're a grain guy and you know exactly how to do these. Five hundred grams. Of carapils. All right, that's what I'm going to put in this. 500 grams of of the uh, carapils, which is a very really mild grain. It's going to add some body and some nice bready flavor. And 250 grams of this. So that's a total of 750 grams of specialty grains. I'm just going to steep them, and then we're going to bring them to a boil with some dry malt extract and add our hops. All right. So, so far, that's what we've got. Now, the hops, I've already decided what I'm going to use. Because I was, earlier, I was upstairs, I got them in the freezer, and I was smelling them, and I was looking up the, you know, the IBUs and all that kind of thing. So, what I've got is I've got one kilogram, and this is just, I'm just making this up, all right? I've got one kilogram of, um, of Simcoe hops. For, um, they're a dual purpose hop from what I've read. Correct me if I'm wrong, um, but they smell wonderful. They're a little high in the IBUs. So I'm gonna boil these for a little bit longer to bring out some of the bitterness to add to the beer and balance out uh, the hop profile because I'm gonna be adding also some Galaxy hops, one kilogram of Galaxy. These are also a dual purpose hop. I'll probably add them again a little earlier in the boil. And then I've got some Citra. These are fresh, well, they're dried leaf hops that were also sent in. All this stuff's been sent except for the Coopers and the Dextrose. Okay, so thank you. All right, so as far as when I'm going to add these, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes, 15 minutes for the Galaxy, and then maybe five minutes <coughs> for the Citra. And that's a fair amount of hops, plus what's already in the, uh, the the Cooper's uh, IPA beer kit. All right, so that's what I'm going to do. 
let me measure these things out and we'll come back and we'll start making beer. Cheers. All right, I'm gonna heat this water to uh, well, about 165 or something, 170, because we're, uh, we're not mashing, so we don't have to be too concerned about the temperature, as long as it's not above 170 kind of thing, right? So let me just go in and see what we've got. And uh, I'm, I'm doing sort of like, sort of a, like a big, a big, big grain bag. We got 168. Yep, that's good. Shut that off. Okay. And uh, gonna put in my grains. And that's all she wrote, really. Just get him in there. You can use a smaller grain bag. I've got a, I've got different grain bags I use all the time, but. And, uh, but you know, this way I can, um, with a bigger bag, I can give it a stir. And I just gotta grab my uh, brewing spoon here. And we'll just give that a little stir. This could be a mash, looks like one. It's a little thin, but there's my grains. And I'm gonna let those steep, <laughs> okay? I'm gonna let them steep for about half an hour. Okay, I'm just going to put on the lid. Bob's your uncle, okay? So uh, when these are done steeping, we'll see you back and we'll start our boil with our hops. Cheers. Okay, that's been steeping for about half an hour. Got myself a piece of pizza and you can let it go for longer if you want, but there we go. So I'm going to give that a little stir. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sparge it or rinse it or anything like that. I'm just gonna let it drain, and I'll get something to put the uh, I'll get something to put the spent drain bag into so that we don't it doesn't drip all over the place. All right, so I'm just gonna pull that out and uh, we'll let it drip for a little while. I could pour some water over top of it, but uh, I really, the, see the problem I have with this particular, um, and I may as well get it going and turn it on and get the heat going. This um, induction burner, and by the way, yes, it's okay if you put a paper towel under the pot. This thing does not get hotter than the, the water that's in the pot. Okay, it doesn't work with heat, it works with magnetism. Induction burners are different than, than uh, stove like heat burners. So you, the paper towel basically protects the, the burner. Um, this burner is only 1300 watts and it does not boil a large volume of water. So I've had to limit the amount of, um, the, you know, the amount of water that I can do this with if I'm gonna do it down here on this burner. And um, this water is not that hot, so I'm able to squeeze the bag a little bit to get as much of the um, flavor out of this as possible. And uh, it's not gonna hurt the beer. All right, that's enough. I'll stick that in there. Okay, we'll clean that out a little later on. Okay, so now, what's next? Anybody? <laughs> Let's get this up to a boil, okay? Put the lid on. And uh, that's gonna take a little while to get this up. There's probably well, about that much water in it. Any more than that, and this thing will not maintain a boil. I gotta get a stronger 
induction burner. This one's great for cooking Campbell's soup, not so good for, uh, for doing boiling wort, okay? In the meantime, I will sanitize my fermenter, put my can of Cooper's into a um, hot, hot water bath so it can heat up, and I'm getting ready to add the dry malt extract as soon as this comes up to a boil. Okay, so there's lots of stuff to do while you're waiting for things, and we'll be right back. Okay, we're almost at the boil. Oh, actually, we're at, we're got a boil under there. Yes, just in time. I'm going to turn the stove off before we do anything else, um, and I'm going to turn the stove off so that we don't burn the liquid or the dry malt extract while we add this. I'm going to put in 500 grams of this. There's actually 850 grams in here right now. So what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to turn on my scale and I'll just measure it and then I'll just keep pouring it in until I've subtracted 500 grams from this bag. It's amber, I believe it's amber malt extract. Oh, no, oh, it's dark. Dark malt extract. I didn't know. <laughs> oh well, it's okay. It's only 500 grams, it's not gonna hurt anything. That's good. So we have got a little bit left in there to make a starter. At one point, I'll clean that later, chop that off and don't worry about that when we're finished, when we're cleaning up. So there's, there's some, uh, some dry malt extract. Goes right in. Now we can turn our heat back on. And now we're gonna bring this up to a boil because now we've got something to boil the hops in and get some great flavors. Boiling, in go my Simcoe hops. I put them in a, an old bag that I've got here, a nice big long one so I can tie it off like that and it doesn't fall in. And in, in five minutes from now, I'm going to put in the Galaxy hops. So there's gonna be two hop additions, one for 20 minutes, one for 15 minutes, and then at five minutes, I'm gonna go in with the Citra uh, dried leaf hops at five minutes left in this boil. So it's, it's about a 20 minute boil total, okay? So I'm gonna set my timer and we'll just keep you updated. Right. Time lapse. Here we go. It's been five minutes. Now I'm going to add my galaxy hops. I have no idea, guys, how this beer is going to turn out, okay? This is the fun that I'm having. Is that I don't know what's going to go on. It's not going to be terrible, but when I make stuff, I don't like to sit and read a book and follow a recipe. I like to mess around, and that's what I do. So I'll let you know how this turns out. You'll see a video on it. We'll drink it, see how things go. Okay, so that's going to go for 10 minutes, at which point we're putting in fresh, well, dried leaf hops and everything's going to be all set to add the can of Cooper's. Dextrose is going to go in and right at the end I'm going to put about 500 grams of dextrose in, maybe a little bit more, just to kick things up a little bit alcohol wise. And that's it. All right. <laughs> we'll see ya. Okay. Here's my dried leaf hops. Broke them up the best I could. In they go. Five minutes.
right. All right, I'm ready to cut the heat, okay? And what I'm gonna do, just because I'm doing a video, normally I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother with doing this. I'm gonna move the burner very carefully off to the side, okay? And bring my fermenter which has been sanitized and it's ready to go. Okay, now, we're brewing a beer kit, all right? So I gotta, I gotta do it the way it's supposed to be done with a beer kit. First, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove, so I'm gonna, gonna get a, uh, I'm gonna get a bowl, something to, to catch these hops in, okay? Get these out of here. Do we have enough liquid in here to dissolve the final, uh, actually, no, we, we've got to first put in our dextrose. And that's fine, I'm gonna turn, I'll turn the burner back on just for a minute. And we'll mix in the, uh, I almost forgot. Filming these things is, <laughs> it's not easy just to, it's easy enough just to make the beer. You've got to film it too. There we go. I'll just give that a quick stir. Get that in. I'm not worried about the dextrose being sterile or anything or sanitized because it was a sealed bag. And so there it is in the hot water. There's enough hops in here that it's going to be hard for anything to uh, to go wrong. So let's get that off of that and into the. Uh, fermenter. Of course that's going to stick, but whatever. <laughs> there we go. In it goes. All right. So, we're going to get our, um, our can of Coopers. And I'm just going to dip the, the side that we're going to open, and the can opener as well, if I can find it, since we've got everything all over the place here. There it is. In the sanitizer, okay? Just to, just to make sure, because you can never be too careful. I've decided I'm going to use um, some... Uh, Actually, no, I'm just, I'm just going to use the Cooper's yeast that came with it. Because I don't find a problem with that for this type of thing. When Cooper switched over to putting paper labels on instead of the metal printed ones, in it goes. There we have it. I'll sh I'm going to rinse this with hot water. And I've sanitized my new fill hose. Apologize if you can't see. Got to get this done real quick. And we'll just give this a mix around and get that all off of there. And I have a trick that I'm going to use because I have, I'm doing this over here on my bench but I have to turn on the water back there and fill this fermenter from over here. So I have a little, a little trick that I'll use so that I don't spill water all over the place on my way from the sink over to this thing here. Okay, and we'll give that a stir. So now, everything's in here except our top-up water. This is how you do things when you're brewing a kit, but you're going to add stuff to it. It smells very good, actually. I'm, I'm quite pleased with the way this is smelling at the moment. Now we're going to top it up. This is my trick, all right? 
into the can over here into the bucket I'm gonna fill this up to 20 liters I'm gonna try and get it down I hope to 70 degrees Fahrenheit perfect all right so there you have it that is how you brew the blindfold on Okay. I have no idea how that's going to turn out. What do you guys think? Put your comments down below. Tell me what you would have done different. But it is fun to take chances and brew something that you really don't know how it's going to turn out. Is that a method that I would recommend all new home brewers to do? No, I, I, I don't. I wouldn't. But you know what? After you've been brewing as long as I have, you get bored and you just want to mess around and then I'm gonna have to hope and pray for the next 10 days how the hell is this thing gonna turn out so you'll have to stay tuned for the tasting video which I will link down below when it is available okay I thank you guys so much for watching you know a lot of people follow recipes you know by the letter because they want their beer to be a certain style to be a certain you know tight follow a certain guideline and yeah, that's, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. But there's also, not, also nothing wrong with going into your brewing area and just saying, what have I got and what have I got to lose? Right? Okay, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you soon. Take care. Cheers. beeped what that was anyway jeez someone bring me some milk <laughs> these will have some cereal